Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Words of Heart. In today's episode, we have the privilege of speaking with author. We just went over this too. Shana Warner. Great. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here. Thanks. Um, so Shana, um, I know there's many um, facets to your personality, um, considering you've written several books. If you could give my audience the inside scoop into who you are a bit, that would be great. Sure. Um, you know, for most, um, I'm a wordsmith. Uh, I love um, I love to tell stories. I love to hear stories. Uh, I the inside. Uh, I'm a tribe. Uh, I don't know whether the. Oh, God. For a minute. Um, Shana, this internet issue may be on my end. I don't have the best internet. Um, I'm going to try to switch it to a different okay. network to see if that would help. Um, it's just going to take a second to connect. Okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm chill. I'll just chill right here. Okay, so um, I can hear you. There's no echo. Um, so it'd be cute. <laughs> I heard the storyteller and then everything went on wonky. So if you could sort of reiterate again, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I don't mind at all, Dion. You know, I know internet, how that works. And it's like, you know, so yeah, no problem. So <laughs> I, I grew up <laughs> with a family of writers and a family of storytellers. So I've always been a storyteller. I love a great story. I love ghost stories. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, so that's how I grew up. I think that influenced me becoming a writer and I love it. I love to write. Um, at heart, I am me personally, I am a trauma survivor. And so I have a really big heart for anyone who's suffered, who's gone through trauma to try to help lift them up show them, hey, you know, this is what worked for me. This might work for you. So I wrote a book that was specifically for trauma survivors. And so that's part of who I am. And of course, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a stepmom, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, you know, all of those parts of me too. But I think at heart, I'm, I'm a storyteller. Interesting. So um, you mentioned helping others um, with their trauma um, through your book, which I truly, truly admire. Um, I'm a poet, so I understand the emotional depth behind writing, particularly. Yep. Um, um, you, I believe you gone through this like motto or quote um, in your email um, saying that you don't just want to help people survive trauma, you want them to thrive. Um, that's an interesting um, choice of words. Do you mind elaborating a bit on what you mean by that or even share your own personal experience with that? Absolutely, Dion. You know, so I think every person, every single person on this planet will suffer something at some point. Um, you know, some people suffer more, some people suffer less, but everyone suffers and everyone has a hidden secret pain. Now, with that said, um, there are some people who suffer really severe traumas and severe trauma can leave a mark sometimes on the soul or on the psyche. And, and it's hard. It's hard because a lot of times in society, people don't like to talk about trauma. They don't like to talk about bad things because it makes people feel bad. Well, yeah, because because it sucks. You know, right. bad things suck. But when you can talk about things and kind of get them off your chest and, and process, then you can kind of leave kind of that pain, some of that behind. And, and then you can go past being a survivor and, and thrive and, and take that pain that some people think of as a negative, but it's not. You can take it and use it to help grow and help develop compassion and just have a better life. And it's kind of one of those weird things about life. You can take the pain and it can make you stronger. You can take the pain, it can make you more compassionate. 
you can take the pain and it can just help you grow. So that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah, I'm a survivor, but I'm also thriving. And I like to show other people how to do that too. Um, I really admire that dynamic that there is a positive um, perspective with any pain, even though it's really difficult to see at that given moment. Um, just to give you a little insight into me, um, I actually got diagnosed with diabetes at the start of the pandemic last year in January. So as far as being diagnosed with any health condition during this virus is um, projects more impending fear than um, probably normal because obviously this virus can potentially kill you. And yeah. having a health diagnosis just doesn't help those chances um, all the more, um, in my case specifically. Um, so um, many people responded kind of differently. They kind of saw it as really a curse, what occurred to me, um, because I had many health deficiencies growing up. Um, so to have to go through this now in my 20s, when it seemed like my life was pretty good and set in stone, and there was no other impending derailments health-wise that would get in my way, then all of a sudden, boom, I'm diabetic um, during this crazy virus that um, my heart really goes out to everyone who's been affected by it. Um, yeah. but, um, I didn't see what happened to me as a curse. Um, and I know many people want to hate 2020 and I completely understand why, <laughs> um, <Right. laughs> but, um, for me, I couldn't really hate 2020 as much as I wanted to, um, because if I hadn't been diagnosed with diabetes, um, I could have died. Yeah. Um, that was the hard cold reality um, to my condition. I was really on the brink of death, but I saw my diagnosis as a blessing um, in disguise and my, God's way of giving my life more purpose and giving me a chance to continue living my life. Like my last breath, what isn't my last breath? Like I still have my story. Yeah. As a writer, you can understand that my yeah. story is still continuing to be written and there's more chapters that are in store for me and that that wasn't my final chapter or climax in this world, so. Absolutely, absolutely, that that is it exactly. And you know, I think that a lot of people, a lot of people have that inside them, they may not know it. And, and I think sometimes you have to help people find that but that's exactly the attitude I'm talking about. It says, okay, so life gave me this crap, <laughs> this yeah. crap, whatever. Okay, well, guess what? I'm going to take that and make it the best whatever ever. You know, I'm, I'm going to take something bad or something that others perceive as negative, And I'm going to turn around and go, hey, what's the, what's the best part of it? What's the, what's the good part? And the good part for you is that hey, you know, COVID slowed things down, but you were able to get a diagnosis. And with a diagnosis, then you can turn around and fight it, uh, learn from it, manage it, whatever, so that you have more time on this planet. It's like, that's a beautiful thing. And, and I totally understand. I have a son who has a major medical disorder. He's 25 now. And, you know, his life has been a tremendous struggle. And yet he is one of the most soulful, um, compassionate, he's just a kind and loving person because I think sometimes when you struggle, you can fall down in the dirt and cry or you can stand up after you're done crying and get on with it. And that's that's the way, that's that perspective. And, and you have that and so do I. Hey, we got that in common. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, considering um, the season we're in and what your book represents, I know you've written several books. Um, <laughs> um, how do you feel your books have um, done considering the season we're in? Has considering your what your vision is in helping others thri thrive um, in the midst of chaos, um, so to speak? Um, how do you feel your books have played a factor um, considering the season we're in? Um, you know, it's it's difficult because I'm a self-published author. Um, my husband and I have a little publishing house. We're based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We publish a holistic health and wellness magazine too, which by the way, we had some really great articles about diabetes that you might want to check out. All of that 
all of it's free. I'll I'll tell everybody that link in a minute. But so I'm as a self-published author, yeah, there's not quite the same reach as when you go with a traditional publishing house. So the reach is slower, um, but it can be deeper. So the people that have read, especially the book that I wrote for trauma survivors about meditation and depression and PTSD, that book touches people in kind of a visceral way. So I'm okay if I touch 10 people instead of 10,000, because to that 10, to those people that it touched, it can change their lives. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay if that book just reaches a few, um, because it's going to do what it needs to do, which is bless somebody and help them stand up, help them rise. Um, so I don't really care about about how successful it is. Huh. I care about who does it reach and can it touch somebody and help them? That's my goal. I love that goal. You're not focused on like the statistical or the yeah. money aspect, which is so refreshing to hear because obviously it's your work. You want it to succeed. You want it to outdo all the other books, but <laughs> it's so unbelievably remarkable to hear you say that you don't care about the statistics I you don't. Just care about who it reaches and yep. that it impacts someone's heart so I just you're just a rock star to me right now <laughs> oh, thank you now that is sweet that that's really sweet I'll, I'll tell you, like I, I had a friend um I've made friends because of one of my books um and one of my friends told me that you know it changed her life it changed her perspective it helped her learn to deal with her own inner, what she calls her crazy. Well, I won't say exactly what she calls them, but, it's <laughs> older. but the crazy voices in her head that were mean and hateful to her, she learned how to manage that so that she took all those voices in her head and, and they became her allies instead of her enemies. Um, I had another lady who survived being shot in the head. Um, somebody came to kill her and she survived it. And this book helped reach her too and helped her, you know, continue on that journey of healing and standing up for herself. So it's like just that, if nobody else reads my books, those two ladies were blessed and I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'm totally cool with that because as a self-published author, I don't have a big company, you know, that's having to make their money and blah, blah, whatever. This is just my words from my heart reaching out to somebody else's heart. So absolutely. Uh, <laughs> now, so I so I wrote a trauma book, but I also wrote a ghost book. Um, oh, yeah. So and that so you know I've lived I've lived a really um, interesting life. I've uh, I grew up on a tiny farm, and I have seen weird things out in the boonies because when you live out in the country there's no street light i've seen strange things and i've had some strange happenings and so i started collecting ghost stories from my life and from my family and from my friends and i wrote a book about it so that it's really funny every every book reaches a different group of people you know <laughs> So the ghost book has reached some people that are sharing their ghost stories with me too. And the world is a crazy place. It's crazy out there. It certainly is. And <laughs> <laughs> hearing um, you mentioned the ghost story, it reminded me of another podcast that I should recommend you to because I feel like they would they would understand um, your book um, because they um, take certain paranormal um stories in their neighborhoods and incorporate uh, that into their podcast so i think it would be a good match <laughs> you know you can hook us up later because I, I can tell i can tell some great some great ghost stories like like i started out in radio so i uh have a haunted radio station story that happened to me and it was really it was one of the first really big ghost encounters that i had as an adult as a young adult okay um, i was in my early 20s when i got my start in radio and it was so nice to me because I reached out to some of my other coworkers and I found out that they too had seen this same apparition. So that was kind of like, oh, okay, 
people don't usually talk a lot at that time they didn't talk a lot about ghosts but when i started talking then you find out that other people have those similar experiences and that's one of the things like you know we were talking about trauma when you start talking to people you find out that well yeah i've had that happen to me too i've had that experience and that can help you bond and grow and learn and that's how it was with the ghost book too so you know, you start hearing, when you start listening to people, if you ask them, hey, have you ever seen blah, blah, blah? And they go, yes. Well, then you're in for a big, big ride because those are some great stories, so. <laughs> Absolutely, because we're all connected. We all have experiences yeah. and we should help each other no matter what. And my, Absolutely. And I strongly believe that. I do too, I do too. My granny, so, I, you know, I told you, I grew up on a little farm in yeah. Southeastern Oklahoma. And my granny was an Irish, uh, you know, my family's Irish, this Irish lass. And she had a, a saying that I know that so many people ha have heard this, but when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, right? Yeah. Although I saw a bumper sticker that said, when life gives you lemons, you squirt lemon juice in your enemy's eyes. That's not the phrase. <laughs> no. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, right? Yes. <laughs> when you're given something crappy or you're given a diagnosis of di diabetes, what do you do? You turn around and go, okay, you know what? I'm going to change my life for the better. I'm going to learn something good. I'm going to find how I can help others. I'm going to help Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. I'm going to do something that's going to make my life better and someone else's life better too. That's what you do with lemons. You make some freaking lemonade. Absolutely. Right? Yes, so we can go to the lemonade metaphor into this next icebreaker question if you'd like. Um, it's a really fun icebreaker question. All my guests seem to love it. Um, if you could have any superpower that's not flying or teleporting, you can't pick either of those. Many people pick flying when I say they, well, well, many people pick teleporting when I say they can't pick flying, but it's the exact same thing. Um, and you can't pick levit, well, yeah, you can't pick flying, teleport. I'm going to add this to the mix too, because it's also the same thing. You can't levitate either. Your body. You can't levitate your body. I'll leave you with that. You can't fly, teleport, or levitate your body. But any other power, what would it be? It would be, it would be vision. I would want supervision. I would want to be able to see someone's pure heart and soul. That's what I would want, because then, you know, when you see that, then, you know, who you're going to work with or who you're going to hang with. And then the people that maybe aren't so pure in heart, you can maybe help them. So I'd want supervision. Super. To be, yeah, super. Vision. Exactly. I want to be able to see. <laughs> That's an awesome power. And I don't think I've heard that one quite yet. So that is an excellent answer. That's why I love this question because many people answer it differently. I, I love hearing <laughs> people's perspectives on this. So it's such a fun question. Um, my power, it's not exactly a power yet. Um, someone in the one of my interviews said this might be technology based, but it could be. I don't really know. Um would be the power for this podcast. And actually it co correlates with your um, background a bit, <laughs> would be this podcast that we heard across other galaxies that have yet to be discovered. So they're not even on NASA's radar yet. Yet they're listening to this podcast from another dimension or what other um, places that have yeast to be discovered, that have yet to be discovered. So I wanna change my answer. I love that. <laughs> That's, I agree. That would be great. That yes. would be super. We can help other beings from another planet with their chaoticness and keep this galaxy and beyond a lot oh. more bearable. Yeah. So. I agree. That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. So we can keep talking about galaxies and lemons all day long. <laughs> um, but we're going to have to kibosh the lemon juice, um, squish it because we're at the end of this awesome conversation. Um, we can't make any more lemonade now. <laughs> yeah, we'll make some later. 
Yes, we'll make some later. Um, do you have any social plugins for my audience? Um, where they can find your book? Are you writing another book? Is this book gonna be a movie that just is already in existence in space? Give us the one-on-one into how my audience can get in contact with you. All of my books are available on Amazon. Um, they are also available on Smashwords which is a great place for eBooks. And they're also available on SoundWise because I recorded them. Like I recorded all of the ghost stories. <laughs> awesome. um, so all of them are available online and um, people can get them there. I also have a website, shaunawarner.com and uh, all of my books and information are there. And I write a weekly blog about just life in general, just stuff. And then, you know, I was telling everybody about our uh, holistic health and wellness magazine. It's called Natural Awakenings. That was the, that's the men's edition. This was a ladies edition. This was last month. All of our content is free with National, uh, Natural Awakenings. It's a national magazine. We publish here in Oklahoma. There are about 50 Natural Awakenings throughout the nation. There's probably one close to where you are. Ours is naoklahoma.com and all of our content's free and all of the content for all the Natural Awakenings magazines. It's a family of uh, publishers. It's all free. I so, love that. Yeah, it's fabulous. It is a great magazine. And isn't she gorgeous? Yes. Oh my gosh. This is like my favorite cover. I think that we've ever done. That was the last month's women's edition, but he's pretty much a hunk too. And look, <laughs> he's eating veg. Every yeah. night. We, we gotta get we gotta eat more veg come on people yes yes yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh Shana, um thank you for joining me today this was an awesome and fun conversation that i'm sure is gonna impact someone i'm pretty sure i hope so too dion i hope so too maybe not just here on this planet but you never know maybe beyond Yes, maybe beyond. That is the goal. I'm sending that into the universe who is ever listening from Mars. <laughs> to all my listeners, um, stay healthy, stay safe, um, wherever you're tuning in from. <laughs> and until next time. Bye. Peace and love. Bye. <laughs>